I will talk mostly about ionic dynamics and memory effects, which is uh, relevant to the stability. So here we have the, <coughs> the JV curve. And of course, you want to know the, the power conversion efficiency. And um, Antonio was very fascinating about how you get that when you have hysteresis. This was very interesting. Uh, uh, we, 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 we want to understand the, the dynamic phenomena occurring here, okay? So we do modulated voltage instead of just scanning the voltage and the current, we do modulated uh, with some frequency. And this gives this uh, spectra. They have a real part that is the resistance and they have an imaginary part which is related to, to capacitances. And um, well, you have hysteresis. Uh, this is not so fashion now, but I think it's interesting. And uh, I like to talk about it because uh, I am working with devices where, where the hysteresis is highly exaggerated, the time and restores. They have a very big hysteresis and is the main property, the strong memory effect. So you can do new devices. Uh, and this is actually a 27 tandem, 27% tandem. Uh, so they have, they have some nice hysteresis here. And, and this hysteresis is connected to the impedance. Right? So one of the processes we do is to, to connect, to measure the impedance, and then you can get an idea about the, how much hysteresis and the origin of it, okay? So we do understand uh, capacitance in the perovskite solar cell. This was work by Germán García Belmonte and many other colleagues. So, so there is a, a, a high frequency. There is a dielectric realization, like in any materials. Here, there is a big dielectric constant. And a low frequency, there are uh, other things, depending whether you are dark, light, the contacts. A lot of things can happen. But one thing that happens is that very often you have a very big capacitance, which is like a Helmholtz capacitance, is because this is like a solid electrolyte. And then it has ions coming to the surface. Uh, so this is one thing, and other things can happen as well. But, but the perovskite is like a mixed ionic electronic conductor, and you have to deal with it. So you have the, the subject of the hysteresis, and this is a normal hysteresis in perovskite solar cells. Then Around 2015, Germán García Belmonte and Borgan and other noticed that sometimes goes the other way around. And this was called the inverted hysteresis. Okay. Uh, and uh, uh, at this time, we were doing the correlation of the hysteresis with the capacitance. This was Hison. She was a student of Nangyu Park and she made this, these nice measurements with a strong hysteresis correlated with the big capacitance while in the inverted, uh, the, 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 there was no hysteresis correlated with less capacitance. So, so the, the, there's a way to, to measure uh, reasons of hysteresis. And then came this other thing, uh, this looping in the, in the negative capacitance side. And this, a lot of people measure this also. And uh, this is David Cain, for example, and this is from Fabregat, my colleague, and oh, okay, he noticed that you reduce a lot the resistance when you have this loop, and this is not good for a solar cell. So this is a, a big increase of the recombination resistance, and this is quite relevant and dangerous, okay? So now this is an inductor. In my current view, I will talk a little bit about it. So I start explaining the chemical inductor, okay? Because for 20 years, many of you know, I made papers about the negative capacitance, and now I don't like to talk about the negative capacitance anymore because there is no negative capacitance. You, 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 you can make negative capacitance. People are trying to do it in ferroelectrics. And this is actually very nice because if you can do a negative capacitance, you can do very nice transistors where with, with, with lower drive on voltage. But here, here, what we are finding is not negative capacitance. Anything. Never in electrochemistry, in solar cells, is an inductor, okay? So, uh, what is the inductor? This thing discovered by Faraday, okay? You, you, you have electromagnetic induction, and then you have an impedance that decreases with the frequency. So when you go to zero frequency, it's a wire, no impedance, okay? It's the opposite of the capacitor. The capacitor at low frequency is infinite open circuit. Here is totally short circuit, and uh, 
of course, the voltage is proportional to the derivative of the current. Okay, so this is by electromagnetic induction. And over many years, since 1940, is the for example with neurons. Huh? People have discovered the inductive response in systems that have no electrochemical inductor. You, the people look for the coil, but there is no coil. There is no coil there. Okay. So then we, uh, this is known in many fields, but there was not a general name. So Antonio and I gave it last year. The chemical inductor. Mm. Chemical means that it's not physical. It doesn't mean anything else. Okay. Just uh, <laughs> It's a general, it's a general structure. You can find it anywhere, okay? Uh, and it's always the same. And the people start discovering it every 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 three years. So no need to discover. It's just a chemical inductor. So it will have the same impedance and time transient as the other. And is this okay? Simple thing. Simple, simple in the sense that this is an equation with memory. Okay. So this is current voltage. Uh, this is the conductivity. And this is the capacitive response you always have. If you have contacts or geometric capacitance, always there is a capacitance, okay? But there is an X here. U is the voltage. And the X is, is, is something that is going to respond slowly. And the second equation is the slow response. It's, it has a, a, a memory effect. It has a relaxation effect. And, and the X can be a lot of things. The X can be ions coming to the interface, can be electrons in traps can be yesterday a winter tour they make a model they show it can be excitons because exciton makes makes light emission slower than electrons coming and holes coming to the center and it can be catalysis a lot of things but if you have this structure then you make uh, this little calculation you find the impedance and you have an inductor just like that. So this delayed response is the inductor. That's so the chemical inductor is that you have any something that is slowly responding. Okay, I, I will show it here now visually. Okay, uh, if you don't like equations, I give a drawing. All right, <laughs> but so you switch on the voltage. So you have instantaneous current. The U, the X don't exist still. So you have this conductivity. And you have instantaneously the capacitive charging. This is the immediate transient charging. Okay, so this is what you have at the first instant. Now, when time goes on, you have also the X current, and you don't have the capacitive current. So now you have more current. So the signal of the system is that the the current is increasing with time, and the resistance is decreasing. This is the inductor. Okay, you have more more current with time. Okay, so in the impedance, we will have the RC at high frequency, the typical RC. But when we go to low frequency, less resistance, and it's coming this way. And this is uh, what happens. So here are simply many many examples over the years. This circuit we proposed it in 2006 with Thomas Dietrich and a lot of friends uh, because he was appearing in a lot of uh, solar cells. And, it was the same circuit. Uh, it was, of course, fitting very well the response. This is OLEDs with hemboling. This is coming through right. This is the perovskite. It has one or two inductors. One, two, because the perovskite is always giving surprises. <laughs> and this is uh, very well characterized in electrochemistry, in corrosion systems. Okay, in corrosion systems, you find this, you see very big chemical inductor. It's actually going to negative resistance. This is what my current topic of the neuron here, the resistance is negative, is decreasing. And then it comes to the left, this is the negative. And, and then this starts spiking, okay? So if you add negative resistance to the chemical inductor, then you have a neuron, hmm? okay? But uh, the normal chemical, like, like this one, uh, this is another corrosion uh, system. You see the chemical inductor here. And then it's passing to, to, to negative resistance, also makes, makes uh, sustained oscillations. Uh, another one, uh, this is from batteries. You, you have strong reactions uh, and you have loops and chemical inductors in the batteries also because of corrosion. And this is the first, okay, people like the chemical inductor name now, they have published in papers about it. 
Uh, this is phase separating electrode material. So, okay, uh, the, it's just a name, okay? But it's a structure that will appear in many places, okay? So now we apply it to the, to the perovskite and we come back to the issue of the inverted hysteresis. And then uh, we have to distinguish the, the capacitive and the inductive because we have two possibilities and they have an opposite behavior. This is the typical capacitive uh, uh, hysteresis where, where uh, the transient is not finished at this moment. So it opens like that. Okay, and, and this is because when you have a capacitor, the faster the current, the more, the more uh, current you have. The incapacitance, the transient current is proportional to the scan rate. More faster measurement, more current. So the current increases, okay? So the current increases, and this is what is opening. In, in this, in forward is going this way, in reverse going the other, so you open the JV curve, okay? And then you go to this typical, this typical plot that this was very well characterized by Germán García Belmonte, also with Osbel, and this is very well understood. In the, now, if you have the inductor dominating a low frequency, it goes the other way around because the inductor is like a negative capacitance. So faster scan will create more negative current. So it opens the other way around, as they said many years ago. Okay, so uh, this is the capacitive, the, cap the inductive, and you can have a transition from capacitive to inductive. And then they will cross. If at low, if, if you are on setting the inductor at high voltage, which is very typical, then there will be a change of the hysteresis. So it does have to be one or the other because the impedance is changing and you won't set. Uh, I will show the example of this. So the first point is I can have regular hysteresis associated to capacitance, I can have inverted hysteresis associated to impedance. And this is a diagnostic of what is going to happen. Okay? There are many examples here. This already discussed, and this is a work of, of Fran uh, that was clearly recognizing the hook here of the inductor with the inverted hysteresis. Okay, one of the first uh, papers in 2020 where it was highly recognized. Okay, because he is my good friend and uh, he is by the next office, and I think he looks at my computer when I am not there. And <laughs> No, 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 no. Fran is very smart, yeah. <laughs> but we are arriving at the same conclusions at the same time, okay? <laughs> okay, so uh, why the chemical inductor for the perovskite? Uh, several people has put these ideas over the years, okay? Jacobs, uh, Wolfgang has a nice paper, and it's somehow related to ions coming to the interface and making a change there. Okay, it's a general idea. So this I just, without giving a specific mechanism, this is the idea I told you before of the chemical inductor because there is a slow, there is a fast electronic current and the, of course the capacity current. But when you are putting voltage, the ions are trying to go, okay? And in some minutes go there, but if it is in the lab of Antonio Bate, it takes days, okay? <laughs> okay, they are different, different, all these different scales, but there is something is taking time to arrive there. Now, it, when it comes here, it creates more current. Why? Because now this is electronic current. Maybe more induced uh, recombination at the interface, okay? Or something. This is now difficult to understand. This is not clear, okay? This is the general idea mentioned. There is a consensus. But in any way, in any case, the general equations are clear and they generate the inductor, okay? So one first idea, was a surface polarization model. This was uh, done by Agustin, just when he came, uh, and also enough, uh, when he came to my lab, we sit down and make a little model and we wrote this equation uh, just to explain some, some loops. And this was the first uh, structure of the, of, the chemical, of the chemical inductor. And it was giving very well, uh, very good uh, a description of the, of the loops. Eh? Mm. And then we continued with time uh, splotting this. And now I show data of very nicely stable bromide perovskite solar cells. Uh, in the dark, not to complicate things, because when you put light, 
is more complex, less reproducible, and we just want to make a mechanistic study. Okay. So now here I show you what I announced before. You see, we move with the voltage uh, from 0.9 to 1.6 because this is large band gap. Okay. And you can see the evolution of the impedance spectra is double arc, the typical double arc, everything positive and nice. And suddenly here, whoop, it's coming the inductor. Mm -hmm. This is this orange 1.2. So after you go after 1.2, you onset the inductor. What does it mean? Okay. We don't know. It's related to this mechanism we said before. Okay. But look at here. Then if you look at the hysteresis, it's here is increasing the current with the scan rate. Here is decreasing. So there's a strict correlation of the dominant equivalent circuit element at low frequency with the type of hysteresis, okay? So this is now uh, very nice. And we learned to make models, how? Uh, okay, now this is uh, also a complicated part because to, you can make all drift diffusion models and you can make a lot of the. So uh, I started to make models that are the simplest as possible. And I learned this from neuron theory. There are neuron models I will mention later that they use three or four differential equations and they describe a neuron. And a neuron is an extremely complicated thing, but you get the essential behavior of the dynamics and the response to transients. Okay, so I learned uh, to make this, uh, these models, okay, because in the pandemics we had nothing to do. So looking videos and things like that, and, and then da, 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 I could make these things. So now I can make. Uh, I see a transient, I can make a model, more or less, okay? And it's like the chemical inductor, but the chemical inductor was two equations, was one conduction and one memory. But if the system is more complicated, will not have only one memory, will have more variables. The, the standard model for neurons uh, made in 1950 by Hausner and Hossi has three memory variables. We can put one, we can put two, okay? So, uh, so we make uh, we make these neuron style models, and then we have a nonlinear model. And now I'm very interested in those nonlinear phenomena, okay? Because now uh, different you can make uh, the JV curve, the hysteresis, for example, you can measure, or you can make a transient by a big step voltage, one volt and C to decay. These are nonlinear phenomena. So for this, you need this type of models, or a big drift diffusion. But what is the problem with this diffusion? This diffusion is very good when everything is controlled by the bulk transport. But when there are stories of reaction at the interface, uh, the diffusion is not so well suited. So, so this is the problem. So I think this is a very good intermediate step to get the essential dynamics, and then maybe we can go to a deeper uh, way, okay? So we could describe very well uh, all this data. And this is an example of the transient by the that we can describe now with the chemical inductor, uh, uh, which is, a, which is an, a, 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 an initial spike observed since the first perovskite samples came to my lab. Like you, you, you switch it on and you see something, something spiking negative. And this is, we know now with the, the world with Enrique Hernandez, this is the manifestation of the of the chemical inductor. As I said before, the chemical in, in the, with, with a chemical inductor, you will have first the capacitive RC, but then the current will rise. This is the, and this is what happens. You have the initial RC charging uh, to the some stationary current, but then you have the inductor effect and the current rise. So, so the result is like a negative initial transient, a dip, okay? <laughs> So, okay, I think I have some time still, no? Uh, so I will talk a little bit about wh wh why all this. Uh, so this is about the, the mem restore. So the mem restore is, is an element that, that uh, has a very strong memory. And this is the standard description of a mem restore. You see uh, current voltage, yeah, B is the voltage, and you see an X. Is the same thing I explained before. Very, but here is lacking the, the capacity current, but you have to put it if you measure because you always have the capacitance. But the, just the, the chemical inductor I explained is just the memory store. They are the same thing. The conductivity depends 
on the history of an interior stir variable, eh? something X that can be now temperature, concentration, traps, whatever, another, another thing, okay? Mm -hmm. And then uh, we, if, you, if you do some switching, it, it has memory, it has memory, so it has a big hysteresis, and this is the perovskite. So you see, it's a big inverted hysteresis normally the memory restore. So you go, you go to some value here. You have a current down to the minus four, and here you onset a higher current. So you do some transformation into there that makes a much higher conductivity. And the reason is ionic in the perovskite. In the perovskite. So now you are up here. And you can come back, uh, reverse, and reset it. So you can reset it. It will be another cycling state, but more or less it is cyclical and it's stable. So the, now, uh, this, uh, as I said before, this allows us to understand very well the hysteresis because the, here the hysteresis is colossal. It's the, it's the property that defines the memory store. <clears throat> so there are two main reasons for this, uh, for this hysteresis. The classical one is a filamentary state. So some ions are freed from the electrode and they, they go through and they make a conducting pathway. And then of course you have a metal conduction and you do this and remove it. And then you have a very high conductivity state. And another one, uh, which is the ones uh, we study is because uh, as I said before, ions are coming to the surface and maybe they create a passivation the, the cre two nanometers or one, they create some passivation, something, and then they change a lot the conductivity of the device. But the action is at the contact and at the surface, buffer layer, etc. The perovskite is not so relevant. It's a solid electrolyte that can conduct electrons as well. Okay. Mm -hmm. So uh, this is our first example of a memory store. Uh, uh, and here is uh, one, uh, one uh, possible mechanism of reaction with silver uh, that is totally reversible and you can do it and undo it and create this passivation layer. So here, uh, it was not very nice because you see this is rubbish. When you, when, you, when you are measuring an impedance and the resistance decreases, it means that your device is changing with time. This is not possible, okay? So if you if the resistance is decreasing, you need also a you need also a complex part like in the inductor. So this means the device was not stable. And here, uh, my colleague Antonio Guerrero and Cedric uh, uh, could stabilize this and come close to the onset and measure. And as this uh, you already showed before, but this is an restore here. The effect is very big. You have you have the two arcs, and when you come close to the threshold then the inductor is appearing here again, okay? Because it will create this huge inverted hysteresis. So you see the inductor, so it's now well understood. And this is our uh, neuron style model for the memory restore, okay? So this is the conduction equation uh, with a constant current and a variable current. This is the variable current, and this is an F. F is another surface occupation, so we need two variables here, two slow variables, <laughs> because of, where are the spectra? Yeah, the spectra are here. You see, it is not just an inductor. It's not coming down. It's, it's opening to the right. Can you see? The, the dynamics is more complex. So it's not only the chemical inductor. So that's why we need to put one more variable at least to, to capture this going in the other way. And, uh, and this one is also, this is not in the neuron model. So this is new. I wrote my last, my last paper is about this term. So this is uh, the coupling of this surface with, with uh, it's also giving polarization. So then in this way, it's very nice because then we can explain the crossing. The, with this term, we have the crossing. You see the red one has the crossing of the change of hysteresis, okay? Uh, so uh, this is uh, now a very interesting model with this model, uh, if, if I simplify it now, I can do an action potential, which is the, the property of neurons. And we hope we can, we can uh, go towards making an intelligent system with perovskite. This is our current topic. 
we are studying uh, how this is changing with time, with transients. So this is a very nice nonlinear uh, effect. This is last paper with Antonio and Cedric, where they are looking at the mechanism of the perovskite and restore. And this is not trivial at all, but very interesting. This you 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 read this last paper in the in a very nice journal called the Journal of Physical Chemistry Letter. It's very nice because I am the editor. Okay, I invite you to to then now that Monica is gone to send papers to the Journal of Physical Chemistry Letters. Okay, yeah, yeah, this is a classical journal of perovskites and everybody will read it if you publish here, yeah. Okay, so, <laughs> so uh, yes. Uh, and finally, uh, five minutes, or how are we? Uh, five, five, okay. Uh, I will talk a little bit about the neuron in case it's interesting, this pushing this to the limit. So this is impedance. You see the impedance of the chemical inductor and here going negative and here is the oscillation of electrochemical systems. This was the thesis of Mark Copper. Uh, it was done in the 90s and now I'm trying to recover. And this is the first measurement by Kenneth Cole, the person of the Cole Cole plot that everybody likes, but nobody knows who is. Is this person, this man. And he's the one who measured the first uh, neuron of the squid in 1940 and found the chemical inductor uh, very nicely. Because this is the, the first one I have seen in the literature. Uh, and then with these two equations, you see one and two, as I explained before, but here we have to put a negative resistance. If we put a negative resistance, then the system will have these oscillations and this we can recognize in impedance by the transition from the chemical inductor okay, to the left where there is a negative resistance. And this transition, this is this is really a bifurcation. So the, you change one parameter of the system, and the system is passing from unstable to unstable, and suddenly so starts oscillating. And this is what neurons in the brain do. Uh, so I can show you a little bit. You see, we start. With, this is the ID curve. You don't see the negative resistance here because it is hidden. It's in this part, but there's another one smaller. So you don't see negative resistance, but the red point is the bifurcation. And then initially we have the normal chemical inductor. Uh, we go to the blue close, and then we start to have the filling the inductor. Uh, it starts to oscillate, but it still is stable, going to stable point. But when you pass the bifurcation, then uh, it's not stable anymore. It can never reach the nominal equilibrium point so that it will be oscillating. And this is the property. Uh, so now I am writing. Uh, papers about this uh, because I think this is something interesting that we can. Uh, okay, people is building neurons, but they do it with CMOS electronics. So you need like you need like ten transistors and twelve capacitors and and one hundred micrometer square. So I believe we can do that with one perovskite and two contacts, and nothing else, uh, by using the physical dynamics of the perovskite okay if we can we have the inductor and the capacitance this is given to you huh? uh, you don't like it when you do solar cells because it's this low response but here could be useful and then you have to make the negative resistance and this we don't know how to to make it but then we could do we could do with one perovskite obtain the action potential as i showed before analyzing the mechanism and then use it for neuromorphic computation Okay, so I think enough is enough and I will stop here and thank you very much. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm.